Hello. Well, today is Wednesday. The time now is 8.35. Turn left, then take the second left. Slow traffic on N25. Traffic jam ahead between Ship Lane and Cotton Hall Lane. Seven minutes delay. And uh, I was on the uh, in um, after okay. 300 oh. feet. Turn left, Ocean Boulevard. I was in the container yard this morning. Well, queuing up outside at, at 10 to 5 this morning. They open the gates at half past five, and then you uh, you go on in. I was number three, third in the queue, and then you wait until six o'clock until they open. And I had the box on within 20 minutes, and I come back to the yard and been popped up ever since. That's the way it goes. Um, I can't get to this uh, place too early. Turn left, Mission Boulevard. Because I know someone else is in before me. So there's no point, I can't, <laughs> you know, what can you do, so, we're heading up now, and I'm still going to be early now, but I knew the other bloke left early as well, so um, if they got him tipped, they might get me done, they might, they might be clear to let After me in. After a quarter of a mile, get right on the roundabout and take the second exit. I want you to talk about. I want you to talk about. I wanted me to talk about. Go right on the roundabout and take the second exit. Is he going all the way round? I think he is. He's going into the docks. Take the exit. So I want to talk today about. For me, and this is only me, so I can't talk for anybody else, but this is what I find. And what's the hardest part about being a trucker? So, everybody's different, and you've got to remember that. So, what some people might find really easy, other people are going to struggle with, and vice versa. So, and this is in no order of, of, of severity, right? This is just as it, as it comes out. But I think my number one, uh, the hardest part for me, is the tiger. The hardest part for me After is. After a quarter of a mile, cross the roundabout and take the second exit of 1014, the matter way. Is leaving. Leaving out. Whether it's early hours Monday morning or a Sunday. Sunday morning or a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday night. Cross Sunday night is probably one of the worst the ones. Because you spent all day waiting to go, effectively. Can't I can't settle. Um, and leaving Monday mornings is always hard work as well. Because I don't want to, you know, it's like Monday, isn't it? You don't, you don't want to face the week. You know it's going to be a long one. So leaving Monday, it's dark, it's wet, it's cold, especially in the winter, it's bloody horrible. Loading the car up, getting ready to go, loading the truck up. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose one of the easiest ones is actually leaving on a Sunday, because you're leaving in daylight and it's like, okay, it's just like, it's three years a day. I actually find it easier leaving on a Sunday, but, the next thing that I'd like to come on to is when you leave, it's the guilt that you have for leaving. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of that goes on, plays on your mind, what I can do. Guilt. It's not nice. So the next thing, um, I don't think people 
realise or appreciate the long hours that we as truck drivers tend to put in. Now, there's going to be some truck drivers that go, oh, I only drive there, I only do an eight hour a day. Yeah, well, you're, you're bloody lucky then, aren't you? But the majority of us tend to... Um, mile, go left on the roundabout and take the second exit, A13, towards London, then keep left. Tend to put the hours in. <coughs> Um, and I'm salaried paid. There's a sofa there. A bad one, but there's a sofa. And I'm salaried. So I want to get done as quickly as possible. But in the same yardstick, I'm a tramper, so it makes no odds to me okay, when I start and when I finish during the week. Um, oh, yeah, and I'd also like to point out that yes, I am a tramper, and a tra what a tramper is. Roundabout and take the second exit A13 towards London, then keep left. And what a tramp is is someone that lives in the truck all week. They leave either, you know, whenever they leave at the beginning of the week and they don't get home to the end of the week. You know, they're not around during After the week. Feet, they're they're out and they live in the you live in the truck, that's what I do. And uh, you're, 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 you're known as a tramper. Keep left. So the hours are long and anti-social. Um, I tramp because it's the best way that I can be uh, fresh for the weekend. Now that may seem a bit odd and sound odd, but you know, the hours are long. You generally start at five, six in the morning. If, 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 if I was a day man working from home, I mean our day man start at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and normally finished by about 2, After 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Miles, keep right. But I'd have to be, if I was, if that was me, I'd, I'd be in bed, I am, I mean during the week I start at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning regularly. But I'm in bed for half 6, 7 o'clock, I couldn't do that if I was at home. And that's on days. Unless you've got a job where like you're working for like a building firm where you first delivery in, uh, in until a site opens so you get in at seven I mean it's a reasonable time to start work seven o'clock and then um, you're finished by about four four thirty then yeah fair fair dues you know you've got a sensible sort of life but the money's shite isn't it you know let's be honest here um, So you got to, it's, it's, it's long hours. And I couldn't do this as a day man. At nights, I could probably do nights, but who wants to work bloody nights? That's, um, nah, that's not for me. Although I would prefer to work nights and days. Keep right. When I was on agency, I did some late shifts. I did quite a few late shifts, actually, quite like them. And uh, it's antisocial because a towards London, a like me, you're never at home during the week. So anything that happens during the week, you're not going to be there for it. I can't guarantee you'll be back on a Friday night. And uh, you might have to get up early hours Monday or go in Sunday night. So Sunday night is sometimes a bit messed up. You know, it's, uh, it's a tough old gig. You know, if you're working days, you might be too knackered to go out in the evening. And if you're working nights, well, you're not around in the night anyway, are you? And some of the some of the truck driving jobs, not mine, I've got a point out. But some of the truck job driving jobs are quite physical. You know, if I wanted to sweat like a racehorse, I'd go and um, work for someone who I had to shift cages about all the time. But I don't. Um, I want my job to be as easy as possible. Which, as it's downsized, because I am fat, but, like I said, I'm not sweating like a racehorse and tramping. So 
but yeah, it can be physical. The job can be physical depending on what side of the industry you're working on, whether you're, you know, chaining down and ratchet strapping stuff in the wet, blowing a gale, or it's a, you know, grabbing, roping and sheeting and putting sheets over loads and all that malarkey. And, uh, yeah, I'm too old for that sort of shit. I ain't doing that. I don't even want to strap a load. Four twist locks in each corner and open and closing the doors and putting the seal on. Job done, easy. That's what I like. So yeah, it can be physical. One more one. Some people get lonely doing this job. You know? I can go for, and this is one of the reasons why I started doing these vlogs. You can go for, you can go a couple of days without really talking to anyone. You, know, you get a grunt off the uh, forklift or off the people in the warehouse sometimes, and, that, and that's all they do. That's all you get out of them is a grunt. You know, you've got to go out of your way to make conversation sometimes, and then sometimes the conversation is intelligible. So uh, yeah, that can be hard work for those people that need that sort of type of stimulation. I'm quite happy with, without it, but, so I don't suffer from loneliness, and I'm I'm, I'm happy in my own skin. But, you know, if you're on a downward spiral and you've got no one to talk to, uh, you can see where the problems creep in, and there are a lot of problems. There are a lot of people with problems out there. Well, poor, next one, poor diet and lack of exercise. Well, lack of exercise, so that's mainly on my part, because I'm lazy. Um, I could go for a walk every night. I could go for a run every night if I so wished. I ain't going to, I'm just, I just, I just can't do it. My knees were nambling. Um, but I should be going for a walk every night. I really should. And I need to do that. And poor diet, well, you know, it's not like, you know, I don't eat takeaways. Very rarely do I have a Burger King or McDonald's or a Kentucky Fried Chicken or anything. In fact, Kentucky Fried Chicken is the food of the devil, so I, I try not to touch it at all. Um, so it's rare that I have a, a, a takeaway meal, like a fast food meal. Very rare. I tend to either make my own food up, which is reasonably healthy, or I buy food in, you know, um, not the best, high in salt, all that sort of shit, but, you know, better than eating um, McDonald's every night. I mean, that's, that's a one-way ticket to a heart attack, isn't it? But, um, so that's the, the that's the, the, organising yourself to have food. Because some people are just rubbish at it, and some people just can't cook. I'm lucky I can cook. I can rustle up some half-decent meals in the truck. After 1.2 miles, take the exit M25 to Stansted. So I'm not frightened about getting the pans out and doing, you know, lamb chops and minted potatoes and some peas. Really nice. You know, I don't have a problem with doing stuff like that. The only time I have a problem with is when I'm knackered, which happens to be most of the time. So it's, it's a bit of a vicious circle. Uh, poor hygiene. If you're, a, if you're a bit of a princess, this probably isn't the job for you, you know. Sometimes you can go a couple of days without being able to get a shower, and um, if that's if you, you know if you're grossed out by that, then uh, just don't, don't bother, don't bother. But sometimes you go for a shower and you look in the shower cubicle, and you know I've been into a shower cubicle before, and I kid you not, someone's taking a dump in it. You know, there's other showers where I would not wash a dog in it. Do you know what I mean? It looks like somebody's come straight off a tarmac in, got in with all their clothes and just hosed themselves down. Absolutely horrendous. So, uh, you know, you, you, you've got to be able to... Take the exit, then go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. You've got to be able to uh, look after yourself, you know, wet wipes, Pour some water up, have a wash. I don't shave, I've got a big beard, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, and toilets as well. You know, if 
feel grossed out about having to use a, a bucket or peeing in a bottle. Again, not the job for you here, I tell you. Because that's, uh, you know, you need to go, you need to go. Can't always get in the services. After 900 feet, go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit, M25, towards Stansted. I'm going to sneak down here. Yeah. Traffic. Here we go. Here's a good example. Traffic. Being stuck in traffic. If you get stressed out by being in traffic, go again, right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. Don't bother. You know, you just got to let it go. You get there when you get there. Simple as that. And if you've got people on the on your back, just tell them. Just tell them fuck off. You can't do any more than what you're doing. If they want to come and do it better, they do. Get, get them to get a license. Get them to spend five grand and get a license and then come and do it. Yeah. I'm stuck in traffic for half an hour. <laughs> Unlucky. But there's no point in you getting stressed about it because there's absolutely nothing you can do. Nothing at all. So I'll, I'll just don't worry about it. Take the exit, M25, then take the move away. Time management. You've got to be good with your time management. You've got to know when to say no. And you also got to know when you've got to push it a bit, you know? Um, takes a bit of getting used to, time management. You know, like yesterday, yesterday was a prime example. I went on the docks just about half past one. I was off the docks in half an hour. I went round to the container yard where I needed to pick an empty box up for today's job. And they told me, they said, come back in an hour, hour and a half. M25 towards Chelmsford for 14 miles. So I got back to the yard, parked up, and I thought, well, I could either finish now, or I could sit for an hour and a half to two hours, go down there, and they could turn me away again. Or I could be going there, and uh, take me two to three hours to get round. And that's all part of your working time. That's all, you know, that comes out of your working time, how many hours you can work a week. And for me, it's like, I'd rather be sat back watching a film, on YouTube, relaxing, having a snooze. I'll go in the I'll go in this morning. It meant I had to get up earlier, but you know, I'm only built on one job a day, so I was never going to get two jobs in today because of the distance and the timings. So plenty of time to go in this morning. Got my box on. Went back to the yard, I stayed in the yard, I had another two hour break. I had a bit of a, well I tried to have a snooze, I didn't. Um, got up and uh, had another brew and uh, got ready to go. But yeah, relax the start, easy start of the day. It's always a way around things, so um, it's managing your time effectively. often delayed in this job, you know, often delayed, um, and that's either with loading, unloading, traffic, um, docks, because of one on containers, loads of things that can delay you, and uh, then you've got to try and fathom out how you're going to fit everything into that day, or make it happen, or not make it happen, or where to cut your losses, where to stop, where to start. And that all comes into the, the planning, the planning yourself as to how you're going to work yourself around it and make, make things happen. Because you always want to get the job done. Um, there are occasions where you just get, hold your hands up and go, this ain't happening. I've run out of hours. And that, it, it, it does happen, you know. You just say, look, tomorrow's another day. I can either, and what generally happens on containers is that they either say, well, generally what happens is they turn around and say, no, bring it back go again either go again tomorrow or it goes the box goes back in the storage and uh, they don't get it 
you know, it's not our fault. We've been delayed on the docks for four hours or we've been held up in an accident for a couple of hours. Or they won't unload us for a couple of hours. <laughs> I've had that before. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Some people get frustrated over all of that. Personally, it's just it's like one of those things, isn't it? You know, what can you do? You can't do nothing about it. It's beyond your control, so it's pointless fretting about it. it really is. I know other people. You, you see that you see other drivers that banging on the wheels and getting all humpy and getting the right strop on. You see the drivers that get the strop on. It's like, why are you doing that? Why are you being like that? There's, what does that achieve? Other than raise your blood pressure. Look me on me there, yeah, thank you. You know, what does that achieve? Nothing, absolutely but all. And uh, I think finally the last thing for me, or what, what's the hardest thing about being a trucker is um, your sleep patterns of all the cock. Now I've been watching a guy that's um, on YouTube. Thanks, Billy. And uh, he's, um, he's gone through all the stages of going, I think he did the government funded scheme, he showed how he did that, going from car driver to truck driver. So I thought well, I'd be interested to see how that happens. So I watched him. And he's uh, he got his, he landed a first he landed a job, got a job. Um, working nights, four on four off. Um, he packed it in after a couple of days. And he cited the reasons as being, and, it, and I'm, not, I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking him, by the way, because, like I say, everyone's, every, everyone's, everyone's uh, um, problems are, are different. Uh, but he checked in for citing two reasons. Hey, he wanted to spend more. To, he felt guilty, which okay, I said, you know, that's what we all do that. Um, his sleep patterns were all the, all, the, all the pieces. Well, they generally are when you're on lights because you, you're going against the grain, aren't you? Um, and he couldn't sleep, but he, after two days he jacked it in. Two days. That's, you know, on four days, you know, you're going to... It, it takes that long for your body to adjust from going... If you've never done nights before, that's, that's it. It'll take that, but you can get into a rhythm. You can get into a pattern. And uh, he, he checked it in because he couldn't, couldn't handle it. Which I thought was a bit of a shame, really. Uh, you know, maybe as a first job, you shouldn't go for nights to start, to start straight in anyway. Um, I don't know, but uh, everyone's different. And um, sometimes you just got to go with whatever's thrown at you and, and go with it. So you are getting, you know, he was in at the deep end, really. But he had someone with him. And he said he felt tired and, uh, okay. But he also cited that he wanted to be home with his family. Yeah, he's applying for two jobs that are tramping positions. So I don't get that, because this isn't the sort of job that's family orientated at all. Especially not tramping. He's got a young family, you know. School play, I'll be home for that. No, you won't be. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. See, he got his straps on the wrong side, he's doing them up. I know, they're on the right side. Uh, it, it's, it's just... Slow. Not that I'm in any rush, but and it's it's like I said, everyone's problems are different. So I don't so I don't think I'm knocking the guy. But if you want, if you're wanting to come into this industry, you've got to have a 
you've got to have a fairly clear idea that this job is not family and not family orientated. If you've got a young family, think of doing something different. Become a plumber, become an electrician, so you can be home every night and home at the weekends. <clears throat> and be able to take your kid to football in an evening or, or go and see the school play or the school carol concert or, or, or anything like that or parents evenings because as a tramper you ain't going to be doing it you are not going to be able to do it <coughs> and all that would do is put pressure on your missus or your partner and cause trouble don't do it save yourself the aggravation it might be your dream, but wait until your kids are older. I didn't come into this industry until I was a lot older. I couldn't have done it. This is a, this is a, as far as I can see, it's a, it's a recipe for divorce, this job. It's tough enough um, when you haven't got school kids. Being away, not being around for things. I'd love to be at home every night, but being home every night doesn't pay me the sort of money that, that I'm earning at the moment, and I know it's only for a short period of time. If I thought this was for the rest of my days, that would be, you know. So, hardest things about being a trucker, I suppose, the, the, the hard, the, if I had to single, single it down, the hardest thing, being a trucker is leaving home and leaving my gorgeous Kira. Saying goodbye kills me, absolutely kills me. Hey, yeah. But you got to do it, you? If you, you know, it's, 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 you haven't got to do it, of course. But I do it because it's a short term, short term thing. Uh, we've got a bigger picture, we've got a bigger plan, so uh, we've got to stick to it. Now this Citra boy could really be within the left hand lane. I've got about six miles to come off. That's, um, that's about it really. I will do a positive, you know, the good thing. I don't think it's all doom and gloom. You know, if you're coming into this industry, I just want you to, your eyes need to be wide open. Yeah, you need to, you need to come in, you know, a lot of people come in with rose tinted, I want to be, it's all convoy and rubber ducking and all that malarkey. No. Long hours, lack of sleep, and dealing with and dealing with dealing with the lunatics on the road on a, on, a, on an hourly basis. <laughs> you know, people that have been watching me for a while now have, have seen you know get, get a bit of a glimpse of that. And, uh, yeah, there's plenty of fuck wittery about. Any of it. And it's been able to cope with all these, you know, and all these things that I've mentioned, all going on at the same time sometimes. You can have multiple things, you can have, you know. Yeah, 
plus the fact, oh, the other things as well. Trying to find some way. You might be given duff information. And I'm given duff information on a regular basis. And you've got to try and fathom that out. From the, the sketchy info that you've got as to where you're actually supposed to be. And um, sometimes the addresses and where you're supposed to be can be two completely different things. So you've also, you know, the, the hardest thing as well is being a mind reader. You've got to be able to mind read the way you're supposed to be and at what time and how you're going to get there. And, you know, and getting to grips with um, uh, uh, taco management, time, you know, I should have mentioned that in the time management, getting to grips with your working time directives and your driving times, you know, two different set of rules, but they, you've got to join them both together and make sure you don't fall foul of two, diff, two completely separate sets of rules. <laughs> Why they can't just have one, I don't know. It, it's just, you know, yeah. Two different sets of rules that you've got to comply with. I think that's the main things. I mean, you could you could include like parking, trying to find somewhere to park that's safe and secure. You're not going to get your load robbed or, or broken into or your diesel nicked. All part of your job. You're running out of time at the end of the day, and you can't park anywhere because there's no parking. You know, there's always a uh, being a bit of an issue, especially if you're, well, be an issue, whatever stage of your career, which is why I tend to like starting early, so I can more or less guarantee myself a spot then, the later you start in the day, um, the more problems you have in trying to park, and I suspect I'll be down on the, um, back in, I'll be back in Southampton tonight, I can't see myself going anywhere, but it's a night in the yard, isn't it? I might get an hour on the road, but unlikely. It's a length of time it takes to get a box off and on on the docks. So you've got to, you know, then, then that's when it comes back to your time management again. So anyway, that's that's enough for me. But what you know, so that's the what's, that's the hardest part of being a trucker. What's so ask, if if I missed anything out, is there anything you can think of that makes it you know some of your old salts that watch this and go. That's an idiot. What have I left out? What did you find difficult? What do you find difficult? I mean, some people might go, I like being away from the missus, I'll get some peace and quiet. And the kids screaming, oh, heaven. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and one north, I've got to be in this other lane. I'm actually get myself out now. 11 even. They can't have had the M1 yet, jeez. Straight up the M11. After 1.2 miles, take the exit 27 M11 towards Harlow. Well, there's no hold ups at all, really, was there? Could almost do with having one. There you go, that's, that's putting a kiss of death on it, isn't it? Yeah, so um, write in the comments anything that you found that um, that you found hard about being a truck driver. What did you find hard? What did you find difficult? And especially some of you guys that have been doing it for uh, a good few years. What do you still find hard? Don't say reversing. But to be fair, you know, it's hit and miss sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes you bang it, nail it in one. You know, you go, yeah, spot on, that was. 
absolutely. You know, you nailed it, and you go, "Hey, I'm Billy Big Bollocks now." And then the next day, it's like you can't get it in for love the money. It's like, what is going on? Have I, have I just suddenly lost the use of one eye? I never worry too much about reversing these days. It stressed me out at the beginning when I first started because I was shy. <laughs> but um, now nah, it doesn't bother me. I just. This place I'm going to today, I've been there before. <laughs> it's, it's quite old, obviously. Um, doing a lot of room in their yard. Keep right, then take the wind away. And you've got to reverse into a building, and the bay is tight as. It's only the width of the truck. You've probably got about two or three inches either side. Uh, and you want a shortened trailer as well, because it's only a 20 foot box, so it gets a bit more squirrely. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of an awkward one, but as long as it takes. As long as I don't do any damage, I might have to have four or five shunts. I might be able to get it in in one, who knows? <laughs> Doubtful. But yeah, we'll give it a go. It's not, I, I don't worry about it now. I just do not worry about it. And I think the less you worry about it, the easier it becomes. So again, don't, don't put yourself under unnecessary stress. People are watching and laughing, right? So that's down to them. Above me. Follow M11 towards Harlow for four miles. What are you calling it? Harlow. Hello. Okay, four miles. Oh, I'm nearly there. Oh, excuse me. So, yep, yeah, there you go. What's the hardest part of being a trucker? The hardest part for me, legal app. <laughs> Best part of being a truck, going out. <laughs> I will do one on um, the best parts of being a trucker because there are many advantages to being a trucker. Um, on a whole, I enjoy the job. I do really enjoy it. I think we're about to die, so I'll speak to you later.